Hi, I'm Graham. Welcome back to Man vs Film. It is December already and we have another top 10 list of movies that you can watch right now on Netflix UK for the month of December 2018. And as it, it is a stressful month, there is lots going on, I have picked easy watching movies. These are movies that aren't too deep. Sometimes they don't have too much to them. They're just pure entertainment and as always this isn't an order top 10 this is just some randomized way that i put these movies apart from the top one which is pretty special this time round. so let's get started with number 10 robocop detroit in the future is crime ridden and run by a massive company the company has developed a huge crime fighting robot which unfortunately develops a rather dangerous glitch. The company sees a way to get back in favour with the public when policeman Alex Murphy is killed by a street gang. Murphy's body is reconstructed within a steel shell and called Robocop. I absolutely love Robocop. It's one of these movies I remember seeing in my childhood and just falling in love with it. Back then, it was the completely uncensored, crazy version that you got about this story of a man who has his humanity almost ripped away from him. You have a villainous, terrifying bad guy in the form of Clarence Boddicker. You get so many quotable lines in Paul Verhoeven's science fiction masterpiece. This is pure joy and entertainment for me. I love it from start to finish. And I hear that Arrow Video are releasing an edition in the new year, which I will definitely be picking up. I love Robocop and it's gonna start off my festive movie watching. Not very Christmassy, but so much fun. Number 9. Bad Neighbours Kelly and Mac are settling down in a quiet neighbourhood with their newborn child until the frat brothers move into the house next door. As the family feuds with the frat brothers, things get hilariously dangerous and the fraternity ends up in thin ice with their college, but vengeance on their mind. Sully? Yes. Funny? Yes, it is highly entertaining. You get Seth Rogen versus Zac Efron in this hilariously funny movie. This was something that I kind of have grown to love more than more. I enjoyed it in the cinema and I just throw it on every now and again as just something to veg out in front of. I don't have to take anything in. I just watch it. I laugh. I can lose interest for a few minutes here and there and just sit back into the movie and nothing's really evolved or changed. It's just more gags and more fun times. Number 8. Outlaw King A true David and Goliath story of how the 14th century Scottish outlaw king Robert de Bruce used cunning and bravery to defeat the much larger and better equipped occupying English army. I previously did a review for this on my channel, being Scottish, I have an affinity to this movie before I even saw a frame. I think it is fun, harmless stuff. It is not the best or most engaging story I've ever seen, and it pains me to say that a little bit, but it's still a fun movie with some nice battle scenes near the end, some moments of levity as well with some of the characters, and it seems to be a who's who of kind of Scottish character actors. Number 7, Two Guns. An undercover DEA agent takes advantage of gunman Michael Stigman's idea to rob a bank and bust him and a mob boss. However, it proves too successful with much more money seized than anticipated. Complicating things more, Stigman turns out to be naval intelligence agents who shoots Trench and takes the money. Suddenly the two men are thrown back together as they are being hunted by various vicious parties. Two Guns is one of these ridiculous action movies that gets by on pure charm by its lead actors. Mark Wahlberg and Denzel Washington have fantastic charisma together and it really pays off in this kind of by the numbers film that I have watched far more times than I care to mention here. It's got so many fun facets about it, particularly Bill Paxton as a, a, a particularly bad guy that likes to do nasty things to the people that he catches. It's fun, great action set pieces, but it's all about the relationship between Washington and Wahlberg. Number six, basketball. Two childhood friends are pro athletes of a national sport called basketball, a hybrid of baseball and basketball, and must deal with greedy businessmen scheming against their team. Now hold up, just let me speak for a moment. This is a movie that you are gonna love or most probably hate. It stars Mark Stone and Trey Parker, the two guys from South Park, and it is 
hilariously funny for me. I'm going to fully understand if you guys don't like this one at all. This is something, again, that I've watched far more times than I care to mention, and I just think it is hilarious. Absolutely so much fun. And there is some social commentary there as well about the, the way sports teams and people act, but I'm probably reaching a little bit too much by squeezing that into it. It's just funny, and that's why I love it. Number five, Batman v Superman. The general public is concerned over having Superman on their planet and letting the Dark Knight pursue the streets of Gotham. While this is happening, a power-phobic Batman tries to attack Superman. Meanwhile, Superman tries to settle on a decision, and Lex Luthor, the criminal mastermind and millionaire, tries to use his own advantages to fight the Man of Steel. Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice is a movie that is really growing on me the more I watch it. I had trouble and problems with it, as did most people when it came into the cinema, but I have learned to love it. It is not a failure, it does not uh, mess up my childhood in any way, shape or form. It's just pretty good filmmaking. I like Ben Affleck as Batman. I think he does particularly well in this movie. I love the city relationship that it gets these characters as it starts to try and build the Justice League. I love uh, Wonder Woman in this and especially her theme which is a, a, a piece of music that has stuck with me long after the movie had initially. But like I said, it's a movie I've gone back to a few times and I do like it. And the one thing that seems to tip people over the edge, other than Mother or Martha, uh, is uh, Lex Luthor and Jesse Eisenberg's performance. I, for one, kind of like it. It's a little bit different and unusual. And for that, you know, I'm happy that they tried a little bit. May not have been fully successful, but they did try. Number four, Jack Frost. Jack Frost is a singer who's on the road for most of his time, so he can't spend a lot of time with his son, Charlie. Although they love each other very much, when Jack dies in a car accident, Charlie becomes a very sad young man until Jack returns as a snowman. Now they can do all the things they've missed when Jack was a human. I've made fun of this movie rather a lot in my lifetime, and which was rather mean of me considering I had never seen the film until a few days ago and I thought it was pretty terrific. I'm a huge fan of Michael Keaton, so already it had me on board with this guy. And the snowman, which is somewhat CGI, but quite practical in a lot of uh, segments in the movie, really won me over. And I love this simple relationship tale of, of the father reconnecting with his son and the love brings him back again. It's silly, it's saccharine. It's entirely Christmas worthy. It's fun. It's what kind of movie that you can throw in with the family and, and just have a great deal of entertainment with. Number three is Cam. An erotic webcam performer finds her followers stolen by a doppelganger who hijacks her channel, pushes the sexual envelope further and otherwise seems determined to destroy her life. Blumhouse's recent movie was released instantly onto Netflix and I can understand why because it has some taboo issues although it never fully goes into overt sexuality. It does skirt rather close around the edges but it's more about this tale of a woman whose identity is taken away from her as her online persona starts to overtake her private life. Now there's a fine line down this movie where it, it felt as if it could have went down um, a psychological route which I think would have been far more uh, entertaining and far more resonant in this day and age you know with um, the persona that is put forward on, on these video channels taking over her true self but it never quite goes that way. But it's still an interesting thriller. There is some fun moments. There is some strange WTF moments at the end, which I feel it doesn't quite land. But still, again, 90 minutes. It's fun. It's entertaining. And, you know, worth the time. Number two, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. An anthology film comprised of six stories, each dealing with a different aspect of life in the Old West. Joel and Ethan Coen write, direct this one. They bring a lot of the actors that they've worked with throughout their career into this movie and it is one hell of a lot of fun. There is segments that are better than others but you get that every time with an anthology movie and for me there were more hits than there were misses. This is one of these movies that I could go back to and watch just a segment. Particularly the Buster Scruggs segment that I thought was absolutely not perfect and I would have loved to have seen a film movie involving that character. Yeah, fun. 
And number one, and an easy pick this month, was Lord of the Rings, the entire trilogy. An ancient ring thought lost for centuries has been found and through a strange twist in fate has been given to a small hobbit named Frodo. When Gandalf discovers the ring is in fact the one ring of the dark Lord Sauron, Frodo must make an epic quest to the cracks of doom in order to destroy it. However, he does not go alone. Like I said, this month is all about relaxing, taking the time for you and amongst a stressful time and enjoying something that will envelop you. Lord of the Rings will take up a good chunk of your time, but it's worth a while. You will lose your stress, your anxiety into this movie of a young man thrust into a great tumultuous battle. He has to somehow muster the courage to get through. There is loads of characters, there is loads of special effects that just look fantastic. There is an intertwining story spanning almost 10 hours, which is so involving. It is a movie that I shouldn't really need to talk about too much. You should know all about it. And I think, you know, it's an easy one to pick out this month. I hope you find something here that can uh, make your December a little bit easier. And hopefully you can recommend me some movies to check out this month that I may not have seen as yet. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the new year in 2019. Have a great Christmas and a great new year. See you next time.